You're doing a great job. Um, your coach Frankie is doing a great job. I think you have come very far in two years, very far. But if I work with somebody, I do not make a difference whether you are a junior athlete, an Olympic athlete, a Masters athlete, a World Championship athlete. You're an athlete, you're a rower. And I want to make sure you are as fast as you could possibly be. This is what I'm, this is what I'm interested in. There is no, that's all right, yeah, no, it's a good try. There is no good try. Either it's good or it's not good. Ladies and gents, hello and welcome to a quite special video analysis today where we'd like to focus on one very specific issue a lot of rowers share. And it doesn't really matter if you are a novice rower, intermediate or pro. This is one feature I've seen so many times ever since I started coaching that I really want to use Keith's video and Keith, thanks for sending that footage to point it out and to help everybody to solve it. And for the first time, I'm actually going to call a video analysis I do a masterclass. And I don't mean to be arrogant, don't mean to be cocky. I think a lot of coaches could do this, but the level I'm trying to coach you, Keith, everybody who's watching this video is supposed to be a very high level. So it's not meant to be an entry level, it's not meant to be an just started to row, how can I handle the single? It's meant to be, how can I build speed? Keith is out of Miami, Florida, rows at Blue Lagoon International Boathouse, I think it's what it's called, and his coach is Frankie. And um, they've worked for two years on the basics, fundamentals. And now he wants to make the next step. This is why he sent me the footage. And Keith asked, hey, what can I do? Let me give you some of the facts that you should probably know. Keith is 16 years old, 150, 155 pounds heavy. That translates into about 70 kilos, six foot one. That's about 185, 186 centimeters. And he's got a pretty wide wingspan, an arm span of six foot five, which translates to roughly two meters, which is quite massive. If I'm not completely mistaken with the centimeters. All right, guys, now the thing is, Keith does one thing wrong that will mess up his speed. And it is quite obvious. I mean, you've, you've had time to watch this now. Maybe you can guess what it is. And at the same time, I, I don't consider myself to be Mr. Know-it-all. I'm just a humble coach and I want to help other people. But if you have another idea what Keith could change, put it in the comments. Um, usually people who send me footage also read the comments because they know that the community helps. All right, so my question to you, what do you think he should do? What was your first thought and what was your last thought? I'm very curious. If you look at Keith's rowing, it looks pretty solid. You know, there's, besides the scenery, it's just, I think this is drop dead gorgeous. I know it's not the Alps and it's not, it's not, you know, snow covered mountains. It's beautiful. Yes, the grass is green in Miami, it is. You can tell me what you want. This grass is much greener than uh, grass in Austria around January. We don't have palm trees, that's beautiful. And I don't know any building where you can look at a calm river where you can row. I mean, this is, all right, stop the flattering. The rug looks good. It's a beautiful Felipe, a red one. Um, carbon backwing, that usually triggers the first alarm. I don't think that young kids should be rowing carbon backwing. I know it's modern, It's I know it's quite in fashion, I know it looks awesome and it's probably fast, but can you handle it? We have a pretty stiff set of oars. So we got the riggers bolted right onto the top of the hull. The entire structure underneath is carbon as well, and so are the foot stretchers. Carbon is not known to be a very soft material, and at the age of 16, no matter how good you feel, you're not grown up. You may not like to hear this, and I don't recommend you change the boat, but generally, if you happen to have a carbon back wing rigger single or any boat, get the softest gearing you can possibly go for. At the age of 16, 17, you're not a grown up man. I know when I was 16, 17, 18, I felt like <laughs> I'm Hulk Hogan at least, yeah, but I wasn't. When I turned 30, I was at my strongest. 35, I was my strongest. 38, I'm stronger than I was at 30 you grow as, as in terms of muscles, in terms of raw strength, in terms of bone density, in terms of joint stability. It's a different animal if you're 16 or if you're 25. So one word of warning. Now talking about the technique, let's delete all these lines, watch keep rowing and talk about the issue finally. And it's right there. 
The problem is a massive stiffness around the shoulders. So when you go forward, this part here is way too stiff. And the overall plot of this video is going to be you have to adapt your motion to the boat. You cannot, you cannot act as if, all right, I gotta sit tall, I gotta have my shoulders here, and if I do this, it will all be all right. You have to play with the boat, you have to sense where it is. And by this I mean a very simple thing, like where are these blades? If you sit there, stiff as you are right now, I know you try to be straight, you try to do everything right, it's the best intentions you have, Keith. And I think f your, your coach, Frankie, and you, you've done an awesome job. But the next step is to feel. The next step is to give in, in terms of, all right, at exactly this stage of the drive, instead of sitting like this, you should be doing that. That's a whole different thing. I don't know if you can see this, but this, straight, correct, feel. If you're too stiff in your shoulders, you have no opportunity to feel what's going on. And at this stage at the catch, your blade is just under the water. All you should be doing is put the blade in the water, let it float. Don't tell the blade where to go. It knows, it knows very well where to sit. If you don't change its vertical position, you shouldn't do that. And then you should be loose enough so that you still can hang. And it's like, to me, it feels like my shoulder blades are the anchor of a very, very flexible shoulder girdle. You know, if I row, it feels a bit like I can adapt. I don't have to do this. You, you, you let the blade touch the water, let it sink to exactly the level where it wants to float. And then what you do, you use your hands like hooks. And all you do is you allow the flexibility right there. So, okay, just allow the hands to go together, move across and open. And while you do this, the energy comes right from the legs. This is where the energy comes in. Legs, hips, all the way here. As opposed to many, many, many other athletes I have seen, your issue is not a lack of hip, hip flexibility. Because that, that hip flexibility you have right there is excellent. You're able to move your hip along with the trunk. Your problem is the stiffening up around the shoulder girdle and shoulder blades. I recommend to sense the boat better, to feel better where it is. Don't straighten your arms. Don't do that. I know sometimes you're taught straight arms forward, lean forward, and then slide forward or whatever. No, no, no. Move from the hip and roll forward. You roll the shoulders, you roll the lat. When you roll the lat forward, you only do this with your upper arms all the way to the elbow. To me, it feels like my forearms are loose when I do this. So it's, I move forward a bit like this. I, you can't really do this because your hands do semi-circles. However, if you go stiff, what do you want to do? So, it's always a fight and it should be, you should be like a cat on the way forward. And at that stage, my recommendation is drop your elbow. Drop your elbow so that instead of this, you do this. And it maybe helps to feel like a boxer or a cyclist, but you don't want to be boxed in. Because if you stiffen up your arms, you're going to stiffen up the shoulders. But the, what you want to do on the way forward is get a little pre-stretch in your lat. And the pre-stretch in your lat cannot be done if your shoulders are too tight. If something's tight, you can really stretch it. So relax your arms and then on, at this stage, on the way forward, you want to stretch this baby right there. That way. Because if you do this, this is going to be the muscle that you need at the catch. At the catch, what do you want to do? To me, at least, it always feels like this. When I have a picture-perfect catch, the blade is in the water, Ah, I almost go in with my, with my lats. And then I allow the hands to go together. 
I think on uh, Keith, you spend a lot of time on a linear drive erg. This only requires a linear motion. So in a linear erg, this may well work, but it won't work in the boat. The boat requires you to feel what you're doing. And there's too much emphasis on moving correctly than on feeling what's going on. And you see this, you have to catch, your shoulders are, they're not, they're not stiff, but your arms are. So all of the force, or most, most of the force, I think, most of the force is actually traveling over the top of the shoulder into your back. Yes, your lat is engaged, but not as much as it could be. And I don't mean that you should be at the catch and say, can I engage my light? No, 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 no. You should be at the catch, have a little, have a little pre-stretch on the last bit of, on the last bit of reaching out for the catch. You don't want to reach forward, you reach to the side. You have your lungs a bit of space. You know, my athletes now being in the Zoom life, you always know that. I always say lung, space for the lungs, reach out, don't reach forward. It's always the same basics and classics, but we, we tend to forget this. And the thing is, and this is why technique coaching is always needed, with every what you become stronger, you tend to, and everybody does this, you tend to compensate because you get more power, you can compensate. You don't have to be effective. And the trick is you have to roll like a baby. You have to roll like somebody who's weak, somebody who's not strong. This is why in my humble experience, women are usually easier to teach technique than men because generally women are aware that they or see themselves as not so much raw power gifted versus their male counterparts. To put it very bluntly, women usually don't try to solve every problem with more power. Usually. There are women who try to solve everything with more power and more tightening up. This is more the exception, in my humble experience. And the thing is here, when you do the, the, the race pace strokes, we see this. You see this something you see is some delay now at the catch there's a bit of what's going on here and this is exactly when you are tight and something forces you to be long because you have very unforgiving boat material this is why i emphasize that point at the beginning of this video the problem is you may say all right good um, it's you know the boat's going to force him to be flexible anyway at the catch no problem and why even worry the thing is going to hurt you in the long run uh, muscles don't like that, joints don't like that. You have to be very careful about how you dose your leg power at the catch. If you're too hard here at the catch, it catches your shoulders off guard. Let's look at a different video. That was a start with race pace. And we see the same problem here at the catch. It's pretty stiff. It looks good, but it only looks good if you don't look closer. Now at the catch, Right in there, seat moves out empty because this is because the parts are not connected. And we say, all right, this is race pace, but race pace is what we do the technique for. So there's no use saying, okay, stroke rate 35, everybody makes mistakes. Yes, but the goal is not to make mistakes at race pace. I mean, this is not about, you know, winning first prize in low steady state technique. This is not a beauty contest. It is an efficiency contest. You know, rowing is so demanding anyway. You know, why make it harder than, than it has to be? And one indicator, if you have your seat moving out empty at the catch, which means the seat starts to move massively and the blade is not even ready. It's an overall issue with connecting the whole body to do the drive. It's a classic battle between legs and the wrist. Hard leg drive at the catch, give me more leg power. And the rest of the body has to handle it somehow. Yeah, I just, you know, if I go really hard, I just have to work harder with the legs. No, you're killing your shoulders, you're killing the trunk. You gotta be careful. If you are at the catch, it's always the same principle. And it doesn't matter if you repeat that principle 12 times a minute, which is very difficult to do or 35 or 40 times a minute. There's always the same principle at the catch of placing the blade in the water, letting it float, and starting to drive 
having an immediate force connection to your hands, between your feet and hands, because you, on the way forward you get the slight pre-stretch, it's already in the slight stretch and you dose your leg power at the beginning and you build leg power as the boat starts to become quicker. This is the routine you have to follow every catch. And this is why not everybody can do race pace right from the start. You have to practice this. It's not like we just go faster, more power, we, we, we get all the problems solved. No, it is precision. Precision 12 times a minute, precision 18 times a minute, and precision 25, 30, 35 times a minute. Another factor here is your blade work. This is not good. Your knees, not good. You know, Keith, I'm, my, my intention is not to say Keith doesn't row well. You row extremely well. But you want to make the next step. And this is why you need to work on these things. Precision is key. There is no alternative. And all the way forward, you need to relax, feel the boat. And it takes a lot of practice and a lot of time at high stroke rates to have the same precision. This is why you can never allow to be to say it's, it's low steady state, it's all right. It is not. I'm a bit with the Asians here. The Asians, you know, ancient Asian um, fighting philosophy, you know, Kung Fu, Karate, whatever it is. It is repetition and it is precision. And then it is a lot of sensing what you do. There is no use trying to look good in terms of doing correctly, you know, appear to do everything correct. You have to, and Keith, this is your point right now. You have to make the next step. Working with the boat is key and not looking as if you were rowing correctly is key. The thing is, a rowing race is going to be hard anyway. But you have to invest your power wisely. So let me sum up everything that I recommend you do. Just before the catch, all the way up, do not extend your arms completely. Point number one. Point number two, with slightly bent arms, you want to have a little pre-stretch in your lat. Point number three, lift your hands and move out. You don't want to move forward. Point number four, which is actually point number two and a half, have your blades high enough so they can actually have enough space to lift your hands. If you have to do, oh, if you have to go down with your hands because the blades are too close to the water, it's all gone. That catch is messed up. Start again after the next finish. Point number five, at this point of time, wait until your blades are ready. Place them in the water, let them float, start the leg drive, and don't interfere with handle height anymore. Trust in your blade that it will be in the right position. Put red foils on top, they will make you feel where they should be. This is what they're designed for. In order to avoid precisely this issue, Where's my blade? It's not going deep anyway. It is. If you have something on top of your blade that just tells you, hey buddy, I'm touching water, I'm touching water, I'm touching water, you have an instantaneous feedback. All right, Keith, I hope this helps you. Um, by no means was it trying to be negative, but I think it was pretty clear. Just trying to help you. You're doing a great job. Um, your coach Frankie is doing a great job. I think you've come very far in two years very far but if i work with somebody i do not make a difference whether you are a junior athlete an olympic athlete a masters athlete a world championship athlete you're an athlete you're a rower and i want to make sure you are as fast as you could possibly be this is what i this is what i'm interested in there is no that's all right yeah no it's a good try there is no good try either it's good or it's not good you know so Keith, I wish you all the best. Thanks for sending that footage. Beautiful place to row, by the way. Awesome. And um, I'm pretty sure with this attitude, you're gonna make it pretty far. You know, work improvement, work improvement. And now get the part of feeling right, you know, sense where you are. And maybe spend a little less time in the linear erg. More time feeling what the boat can do. All right, good. Everybody, I wish you all the best. Oh, what interesting side note. I, I have not talked about this. And it's pretty early that I talk about this, but um, make it short. I have set up something that I want to be the place for rowers. It's called rowing.zone. It is essentially a social network for rowers. 
and I want everybody to be on board. Adaptive athletes, junior athletes, masses athletes, recreational rowers, um, ocean rowers, uh, coastal rowers, um, Olympic class rowers, whatever has to do with rowing, fitness rowers, indoor rowers, uh, CrossFit rowing. Rowing is pretty much universal. And I, want, I, wanted, I always wanted a place where everybody who likes rowing can meet. And my ambition was to create this place. It's called rowing.zone. The website is not 1000% ready, but it's ready enough so that you can have a look and start to fill it with life. All right, everybody, I wish you a very good day. If you wanna send me footage, if you wanna improve, do it like Keith. Send a link to footage to video at armtraining.com. Um, let me know that I can use or I should use this video either for a public and free video analysis or you can always book a paid analysis. If you want to work with me, join the training program, go to armtraining.com. If you want to join the Zoom live video coaching, we have a couple times per week now, go to armtraining.com as well. It's all there. Looking forward to see you soon. Have a good day. Bye bye.